Hello and welcome to Embedded Room, a place where we learn about embedded technologies. In this video we will cover the basics of an, uh, client-server communication um, in classic Autosar. So what is a client-server? Basically um, the client-server defines um, uh, a set of operations uh, and uh, where the client initiates the communication and requests the server to perform some uh, service and uh, the server uh, performs the requested service of course and then sends a response uh, to this request. Um, we find in the um, client server communication chapter 4242 here um, and we will re read this together as um, in from the Autosar user guide. Uh, the underlying semantics of a client-server communication is that the client may initiate the execution, like I said, of an operation by a server that supports the operation, of course. The server executes the operation and immediately provides the client with a result, synchronous operation call, or else the client checks for the completion of the operation by itself, asynchronous operation call. Our goal for this um, session is to uh, create the RxML which will stand for this um, task. So we want to create the part for the server and the part for the client and uh, use this in some uh, to tool to generate the code and use this in the software um, and so on. Basically, what we have here it's a um, CDD called TLT and uh, SPD that we created in the previous um, videos. So for now, we want to communicate in between uh, them with a client-server um, interface API. So first thing we need to do is to create the interface itself, how we did it um, uh, for the sender-receiver. So for this reason we will add a new child here and choose elements and client server interface. Under this one uh, we can give it uh, also maybe a short name. Um, my uh, client server interface for example let's add the operations now so the first operation and the second one um, let's uh, rename them as an um, first one operation one and operation two For this one also we may configure um, an error code that we want to return in some scenario from this um, interface so we will add also some an element which is possible errors and rename it to e ok in this case if we want to return ok um, if the operation is successful. Okay. And under this one, we also need to add, if you want, the um, arguments for each uh, operation, if you want. So let's add the argument here and call it, rename it to arg1. Uh, the direction for this one we will choose as an, as an input. Uh, there are three options in, out or in, out and this depends on how the in, uh, interface will be generated. Uh, then we will also choose the data type and we will use unit 8 for this one. And for operation 2 we are doing almost the same where we choose the um, arguments and uh, call it arg2 with the direction in this case out and the type also 
unit 8. We may also yes configure for this one which we uh, missed here on the operation. The possible errors is our defined one for both operations. Okay, so this is a minimalistic uh, interface, but I think it's sufficient and we can go from this to the next step. Depending on the requirements, we need to know which is the client and which is the server. In our example, we will choose the SPD to be the server and the TLT to be the client. So for this, we go with creation of a new port. Uh, ports and p port and call this one p server port and uh, map also the interface that we created my client server interface and also we need um, under the software internal behavior a new element uh, which is um, an event and it's called operation invoke event so this event will be triggered by the client when um, invoking the, the function uh, from the client side um, so under this one we will need to add also a new operation and map the um, port and the target provided operation that we want for this event. So we assigned a, an event for each operation that we defined. Okay, and we will do another one. We can just um, copy paste this one and change. So for this one, we will map operation to Good. So at this point, uh, we are um, done with the server side. We can move now to the client part where we need to do also a port like um, we did for the server side. But uh, in this case, we will do an R port and we will call it um, client port. Under the port we will create a new child here and we will choose the required com spec, client com spec for each operation and we will map the corresponding operation that we will want to use. And for the second one. and map the second operation. Good. Now um, we are not uh, just done. So we need to create um, under a runnable, maybe a new runnable, but I will not create another one. So I will use the TLT runnable. This, um, for example, it's the main runnable for this um, CDD but under this one we will go and choose the um, server call points and synchronous call points for uh, each um, operation new child operation and map the port, the client port, and the target required operation. And we will do the same for the next operation. Map the port, but we will switch and choose the second operation. Good. So a short recap, we have the client 
we have the client here and the server we begin with uh, an interface with a sender point a p port from the server side and with an operation invoke event under the software internal behavior then we move to the client part and we do um, a re require port which the client comes back for each operation and additionally a synchronous server call point for um, each operation now li like we did for the sender receiver I think uh, one last step is to connect the ports so we will go in connection and we will uh, create an assembly connector we will just copy this one because we are under the same composition we do not need delegates so we choose here the server port and the client port so this assembly connector will connect our ports from um, our composition basically this is all so thank you very much and uh, I hope this will help you have a nice day